I'm Yu Yu Lu from Tsinghua University, China. I, my talk will be on extending the lifetime of flash batch storage through reducing the amplification from file system. This work was conducted under the supervision of Prof Professor Ji Wu Shu and uh, Professor Wei Mingzheng. In this talk, I will first give the background of flash memory and uh, the problem of write amplification from file system, which motivated this this work. And then I will give uh, a di brief dis description of our framework named object-based flash translation layer. And uh, after that, I will give three techniques we used in the system co-design with file, si fi file with with flash memory. And finally, I will give the evaluation and conclusion. As we know, the flash memory is getting widely used because of the high performance, the low energy, and uh, uh, the reduced cost. It is widely de de deployment, deployed in embedded devices and now in enterprise servers. But the problem is, the flash memory has an endurance problem. Uh, we take the figure from last year's faster paper uh, from, from UC San Diego. Uh, from the, the picture, we can see the program and erase cycles of SLC is about 100,000 MLC, 10,000, but TLC will drop to only about 1,000. And uh, the PE cycles is getting less and less as the flash memory gets, gets denser. So uh, flash memory will suffer from the endurance problem. Uh, existing approaches have, uh, have addressed the flash endurance problem most from the FTL level, uh, the flash translation layer in the SSD. There are two approaches in this field. The first is well leveling. You, the well leveling tech uh, approach is to make all the blocks evenly worn out. This is, this is well known and has been the fundamental part of uh, FTL. The other approach is data reduction. Uh, the purpose of data reduction is to reduce the amount of data to be written. And this includes two techniques, the data deduplication and data compression. Both the techniques are used either in the FTL or in the file system level. Mm. The file system such as ResRFS, BetterFS has used the data compression to, uh, to compress the data with the uh, content similarity. Uh, also in the FTL, such as the content addressable FTL, uh, maybe uh, in FAST 2011 has addressed the, uh, the data duplication and compression uh, in the FTL layer. But let's, let's take a closer look at the file system um, on the problem write amplification. We define the replica amplification from file system as the change as the write size change from the pre-FS writes to the post-FS writes. The pre-FS writes we define, def, uh, we, we used to, to mean the writes before, before the FS, that is the application writes, and the post-FS writes the writes after the file system. This is the writes to the flash memory. Then we took, um, let, let's uh, take the three mechanisms in the file system, for example. The first is journaling. In the journaling, uh, the journals are kept in the logs first, and then they, they, they are checkpointed in place. This will cause the data to be written twice. And the second is metadata synchronization. In the file system, metadata is frequently right is frequently written back in case of data loss or inconsistency. The third is page aligned update. If we, align, if we update a small update less than one flash page size, uh, more wasted, page, wasted space within one page. Uh, 
I will give a, a simple example in EST, EST3. Uh, the first operation is to echo, uh, a f echo the, the title of a file to the file for TST. The effective data is six bytes, but in file system it will write the, it will allo allocate a block, a data block for the, uh, for the type, for the title data. Then the bitmap of the bl data block is written also. Then the inode will be allocated, the bitmap for the inode, and the de-entry will be modified. After, th after these blocks are written to journal area, a commit record is written in the journal area. After that, they were checkpointed to the data area. Then flash drives, 11 pages, the total size will be 44 kilobyte. The second operation is we will add a 4K content to this file. The effective data is 4 kilobyte. The file system will uh, first uh, mm, allocate a data block for the new data. Uh, because the, the size of the file is a little more than 4 kilobyte, the, uh, the two blocks, the two data blocks are modified, so there are two blocks, and the, the inode is also be modified. After that, the commit record is also uh, added to the journal area. After that, they were checkpointed to the data area. So, in all, even we write small bytes, effective data to the file system, the file system will write many metadata uh, to the flash memory, which it, this is what we call the write, write application from the file systems. Uh, we can see flash memory has provided some opportunities to leverage the characters. First, let we see the no overwrite prob probability. Can we? Can the journal use it without writing twice in the file system? And the, the, the second is the page metadata. Can we store the back pointer in the, in the page metadata to lazily write back the index without um, many persistent operation while keeping the consistency? The third is erase before update. All the pages in the flash memory have to be erased before update. Can we track the free space in the flash block uh, grant to reduce the free space management cost? In the second part, I will describe our framework named the object-based FTL. We call it OFTL, and uh, the three techniques we use to, to reduce the write application in the file systems. Now this is the, the left pic picture is the uh, uh, framework in legacy file systems. When application writes, it will get through the file system, get into the file system through VFS syscalls. The file system will do the namespace translation and allocate or look up the, the physical addresses of the blocks of the file and then it will issue the read-write operations to the uh, storage device. The FTL layer is uh, in the device we call SSD. But in our framework, we think uh, there could be another approach to do this way. When the application writes, we get uh, the, the request gets into the file system through VFS syscalls, the file system, system only translates the file name, file path to the object ID. Then with the object interface, uh, the storage management, management is lowered down to the, uh, the storage management is separated from the file system and combined with the FTL from the, um, SSD from the hardware. So in our approach, we, uh, 
we combine the storage management with the FTL and uh, move the FTL app to the operating system, then we, the part we call OFT or communicates with the raw flash device through the three commands, the flash read, flash write, and the flash erase. And the OFT also expose an object interface for the operating system. So, and, sorry. Also expose the object interface to the file system. The file system will uh, do the object operations on the OFTL. Then with the OFTL, we can gain the knowledge from the file system to know which page belongs to uh, which object. And we also can direct access the raw flash to leverage the flash memory uh, characters. With this approach, we can uh, intelligent ma manage the storage space. We can also optimize our file system mechanisms by leveraging the fa flash memory characters. Here's the OFTL. We, we, we just uh, give the brief description of the data layout. On the orange part, the orange part are the three layers hierarchically in the OFTL to form the lookup of each object page. The first is object index, which translates the object object ID to the object to the physical address of object metadata page. The second layer is object metadata page. In this layer, um, the metadata is stored in each flash page, and the extents uh, we call the layout, and some diff data, diff layout are also put in the object metadata page. And the low, lowest level is the object data pages, the, which stores the, the data of each object. In the In the green part are the uh, in the green parts the data for the small updates are compacted in uh, into one same page and collocated with the object object and file metadata. This is what we call compacted update. And the and the blue one is the block information metadata. This is this part management, the free space management. And the th three colors indicate three di techniques we used, uh, we, we will explain in the following part. Our first technique is lazy index. Let's first uh, introduce what is index metadata in, th in this part. The metadata uh, that stores the pointers in the file system or in OFTL are called the index metadata. The pointers are the physical addresses of other pages. In OFTL, there are three layers, the object index, the object metadata page, and the object data pages. There are three levels, so we can have two kinds of back pointers. The first is for the object metadata page to indicate uh, which object the metadata page belongs. And the second type of back pointer is uh, to, to indicate which, uh, to indicate which metadata page man, uh, management the data page. In this technique, we added the, the back pointer in the page metadata. Page metadata is a, is one part of the pay flash page. Because we use the OFTO, we can access the flash, flash memory directly. So we can access the page metadata, which is also called out of bound area in the flash memory. With this part, we can add additional information to uh, additional information as the back pointer. In this part, if uh, it's just because the page metadata is atomically written and write with the page data, it will not cause the uh, consistency, 
atomic uh, uh, problem. So when we write page made data, the back pointer is written along the page data. If the system crashes, we can uh, scan the page scan the pages and read the back pointer to, recon to reconstruct the index metadata. With this back pointer stored in the page metadata, the index metadata can be buffered in the main memory uh, to reduce the persistence of in index. To reduce the uh, scan time, we use the updating window. An uh, updating window is uh, uh, a collection of flash blocks which are used for recent, recent uh, location. Just as shown in the picture, the, <laughs> the three blocks in, in the updating window are used for current uh, location. If, we, if the space the free space in the updating window drops below a threshold, we will move the updating window. This operation we call checkpoint. Checkpoint is different from the checkpoint in the, in the journal mechanism in legend file system. The checkpoint here is just to move the blocks without copying data and add the free space to the updating window. We will show the, uh, the operation. Before the sliding of the updating window, we make sure the mappings are, persist are persistent in the updating window and write back the updating window metadata. The updating window metadata is the uh, physical addresses of all the flash, flash blocks. And uh, when the two points are guaranteed, the updating window can be moved to, to add new space and this these six blocks are the new updating window. Uh, in this way, when the system crashes, we can uh, reconstruct the updating window by reading the updating window metadata, and we only have to check the, check the pages in the updating window to, uh, to, 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 to make the file system consistent. In the updating window, we also provide transactional rights. Uh, just as similar to the reverse index or the back pointer mentioned before, we add the two as the transaction met metadata, which is the transaction ID and the transaction count in the page metadata to uh, provide the transactional right. The transaction ID is the, is the number, is the identification of the transaction and we also store the transaction count. The transaction count is uh, the total number of pages in one transaction. Only one page in the transaction are, um, are set to the, to the total number of pages in this transaction and others remains zero. So after, after system crashes, the pages after the, and the pages are read from the updating window, we can check the pages uh, with the same transaction ID and uh, compare the stored T count with the, uh, the number of pages we read from the update window. If they match, the transactions are committed. If not matched, they have not finished. So we just uh, throw away the unfinished transactions. In this way, we can provide a transactional right. And the second te technique is called grand block state maintenance. This is for the free space management. In legacy file systems, the bitmap or uh, the extent or other techniques are used for, for free space management. They have to track each block or each page for the state of each, each page. But in flat, flash memory, we can track it in flash block units. This is because the, f the pages in free blocks in uh, flash memory are all free, and pages in used blocks are all used. We, we, we can only check the updating blocks, which is located in the updating window, to further identify 
the, page, the state of each page. So in this way, we can track the um, page state with the block state, with the flash block state. So uh, the metadata of the free space management is reduced. We also relax the metadata persistence of the free space management, which will, uh, the more details will be, uh, the more details are in the paper, so I will not present here. The third technique is compacted update. In this part, we, we want to, we, we aimed for the small updates, which is less than, than one page. This is because, sorry, this is because uh, there are many small pages updated in the flash memory because, the, uh, because of the auto, the out, auto place update. Think about one scenario if we want to update the, 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 the data from the offset of 4089 to, to 8100. There will be three pages to be update, updated. But in this, in this technique, we, we can separate the first 10 bytes in the six, 10 bytes in the update data and the, the last eight bytes in the update data. This is, to, this is the small updates. We can compact the small updates into one page and just update the whole page in the middle. So with the compaction, the multiple partial page updates can be compacted into, the, into one flash page. And uh, uh, we can also locate the diff page. This is the compaction of uh, multiple pages to the metadata page. So in this way, we can reduce the uh, data updated for the small updates. We will show an example in our uh, um, approach we named OFS, which is uh, a, which, which is built with the OFTL technique. This is the first. Ex the operations are same as be as, as mentioned before. We first echo the title to the full TST, and the I node of the full TST and the diff data. The th the six bytes title are collocated with the inode. This is the this is the inode page, and we we keep the metadata page metadata the OMP. OMP is the type of this page, and the the second O OID two OID two zero zero are the backpoint for this page and the version one. And we also keep the transaction information such, such as the transaction one and zero in, the, in this one. And in the, we also have to update the director entry, the full TST. So this type is OD, ODP and the back pointer is, the, is o, OID one. And uh, version two, we also add the transaction, transaction one and the total number, the T count is set to uh, Two, because there are two pages in this transaction. We then write the two pages to the updating window. The, first ro the second operation is to uh, append the full key content to this file. It's just because the size of the file is a little more than four kilobytes, it's about uh, 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 for 4,102. 4, so the first four, the four, the first four kilobytes are updated in the data. We call it the, in, in the top, top half. And we put the, put the left six bytes to the inode. This is the, the last uh, six bytes in the content to the inode as shown in the, uh, in the bottom half of the 
orange part. So the page metadata is set as just as before, and the transaction are set are set to transaction two. Uh, one one of them are set with the t count two. So this these two pages are related to the updating window two. So we finished this work. We, we finished the, this these two operations without any uh, bitmap or bitmap bitmap updates. We just uh, um, keep keeps the updating window and uh, track the each free space using the block ground. So we can compare the, the, the simple example in ET3 and OFSS. The OFSS significantly decreases the write amount to the flash memory. This is because the four uh, aspects, the first is we can provide transaction write with the transaction metadata in the page, page metadata to remove the journals. The second is we can uh, store the back pointer. We also call it reverse index in the page meta, metadata to uh, aggressively buffer the inode. And for the block inode bitmap, we can use a free space management in a coarse grain. Th that is the flash block units in the flash memory. And the last one is the page al unaligned update, which we use the compaction to for the small updates and collocate them with the metadata. So <coughs> with this with this for a space, the metadata can be reduced in the file system. And finally, I will give the evaluation and conclusion. We use the evaluation. Evaluation metric, the write amplification. This is we have mentioned before. Uh, the flash writes, the writes to the flash memory divided by the writes from the application. We use the, fra the framework in the simulation environment. We replace the read, write, close trace from the file system. In the OFS evaluation, we uh, just as the figure left to show. The RWC traces are replaced on object file system, which is simulated in the main memory to translate the path name to the OID as the OFTR, which manages the storage management. And last, the OFTR will write this to the flash memory. Just as the same, the file system was the file system replaces the RWC traces and uses block trace to. Um, get the block trace, and the block trace will be then played on the PFTO to measure the overhead of PFTO. PFTO is a page level flash translation layer using the lazy FTO, which was provide, which was proposed in SIGMOD two, 2000, 2011. And the overall compar comparison of this. Um, of this work, we compared the OFSS with the ESC3, ESC2, and better FS. We can see uh, the write amplification is reduced. The uh, is reduced is reduced. This is the synchronized mode. Each write in this uh, in this picture is synchronized to the flash memory when they are issued. So this is something similar to write through. And the result is the OFS is, uh, can be 15% of ET3 and half about the ET2 and 10% of the better FS. And in a synchronized environment, the OFS uh, the results are shown here, but the worst case is that sync EST3, we set it with the data journal. This is the worst case for, for the data journal, and we use the sync EST2, which has no journals. But just by comparing the EST2 and the EST3, we can see the benefits from, from journals, and the EST2 and OFS, we can see the benefits from the uh, metadata, and we will show the metadata amplification. 
the table will show the oh, metadata application is dramatically reduced. And we also show the composition of metadata amplification from the figure we can see the ET3. Uh, the journaling will be the dominant uh, cost and the ET2, the bitmap show uh, the bitmap as I know the table are the two dominant. And we, we also show the impact of flash page size, the replication get, gets worse and worse as the flash page size increases. The sync mode is much more worse than the sync, and the sync mode, the evaluation results are shown in our paper. So we, we can get a conclusion. The metadata in file system are frequently written back for consistency and durability, uh, which amplifies the right rise to a fast memory. The fast memory also offers the opportunities for endurance aware file system mechanisms. So we, we, what we have just mentioned before for the journaling, for the metadata synchronization, and the page align update. And, uh, sorry. And I think this is the end of our, my talk. Thank you. Hi, uh, I'm Rick Spillane from Apple. Um, I like how you sort of are trying to exploit by hook or crook all the different little oddities of the underlying storage device. Um, but I, um, could you elaborate a little bit on why you think overwriting sequentially to a journal would cause so much write amplification? I would imagine that the underlying FTL would have a pretty easy job of garbage collecting that and wear leveling that pretty intelligently. So I'm just curious why it causes so much right amplification. So, right into the journal. Sorry, I, I have not understood what you have said. Could you please, sir? So can you explain more carefully why overwriting sequentially uh, in a loop to the journal file would cause so much write amplification. Uh, the journals in the journaling mechanism we call the write amplification. This is because the, the data are duplicated in the journals. It will have to be written to the journals and then the journals are copied to the original place we call the in-place update. So, the, the data are write twice, so we think the duplicate write can be eliminated. But your um, evaluation numbers showed far more than a factor of two difference in terms of time spent doing metadata updates. Uh, you mean the, the performance, that, the latency performance? I thought that was true, but I could have been mistaken, yeah. Maybe we should talk offline. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Uh... <laughs>